So far in this tutorial, we've talked about reformatting an audio loop and converting it into a Rex file. Everything has been pretty technical and non-creative, but now is where the payoff comes. We'll actually get an opportunity to drop these recycle files into the Dr. Rex loop player, and I'll show you different ways that you can manipulate these loops. The exciting thing is we have now turned these from audio files into actual instruments that we can play with and perform if we need to. We'll start by launching Reason 4. And just as in Recycle, we have our Preferences window under the Reason menu in case you need to uh, select your sound card properly. And under the Create menu, you will find the ability to load the devices that you need into the rack. Although this is not a tutorial on Reason, I do want to give you a couple of pointers about the device, uh, the Dr. X Loop Player, at a later point. We'll start by loading up a mixer and continue by loading up a Dr. X Loop Player. And on the Loop Player, you have a folder button that allows you to load up your Rex file. So I will use this to na navigate to the folder where I saved the initial loops that we started with. Let's try loop number one here. You can, say, you can see now that this is the recycle file that we had chopped up earlier. I can preview it with this button. And you can also see that the program has created a sequence track for this device. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we can now use this loop. The most basic way is to hit the two track button. And this will actually drop down the MIDI triggers needed to play each of these slices exactly as we heard it in the loop. If I hit select slice via MIDI and I play the file, you can see which samples are being triggered as the loop is playing. Also, the original tempo of this loop was 130, and notice that we're about to play it at 120. So one of the benefits of recycling the loop is that you are not dealing with lining it up to the grid and time stretching it as we did earlier in Cubase. If I look at the data here, go to the edit window for this track. Let me just expand this so we can see a little bit better. We can see that these are the triggers that are assigned to play each of these slices. Since I have the Select Slice via MIDI button selected, you can actually see which slice is being, tr being triggered by these MIDI triggers. Now that we have this slice, this loop recycled into slices, we can actually change the program very easily. Any trigger that falls on lane one, slice one, will actually trigger this first sample in the loop. So if I were to take this trigger here, which is normally playing a hi-hat, and move it up to the snare lane, it will actually play a snare at this point in time. As opposed to so that is the second way that you can reprogram this is by moving the triggers to play a different sample at that point in time another way that you can use this loop now is as an instrument because each of these slices has been mapped to a note on the keyboard. And I'm actually playing a low C here. I think this is uh, C1, C sharp, D, D sharp. And I'm just moving chromatically up my keyboard and triggering these files. So this is something that you could not do originally with a loop. Let me just find a pattern here to play. And I can actually play this loop now as an instrument because I have the ability of triggering each of these slices individually. Turn the click track on.
Go back and overdub a hi-hat. And I can also choose to quantize this as well. I'll select the file. The quantize features are here to the right. I've got it set to 1 16th. I'm actually going to change that to shuffle to give it a little bit of a groove and apply that feel. Let's see what we've got. You can take a look at the triggers too. This means that if you like the sounds in the loop but you don't like the programming, you can replay it or re-edit the triggers. Now let me show you another way that we can create a different pattern, letting Reason generate some random patterns. What I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is drop this pattern to track. This is the original pattern. But there's a feature called randomize in the program. Basically, I'm going to highlight these triggers. I'll set my locators around these four bars. And while it's playing, I'll hit the Apply under Alter Notes here. It'll randomize these triggers. Uh, this is useful for creating drum fills, turnarounds, variations of this pattern, and bits and pieces that you can use to propel the drum pattern over a 16, 32 bar phrase. I'll show you an example. Turn the loop feature on so we get those first four bars playing again. Now, uh, for example, I can say that I like this first bar and the second bar, so I will cut those into separate elements and delete the rest. And I'll use these pieces later to extend this phrasing into a 16 bar, 8 bar, 32 bar phrase. Let me drop this pattern to track, repeat the process, and create some other variations for me to use. Hit the Apply button down here. I hit it one more time, see what we get. take this first and second bar again. I think you get the idea. Let's just take a look at this real quick. It's a completely random pattern. It probably would have taken me forever to program something similar. I'll set these aside. And now let's use this to turn this pattern into an 8-bar or 16-bar phrase. For example, I'll copy the pattern again. I'll use the uh, razor blade to delete the last bar of this four bar phrase and use one of these variations instead. And then use another variation Basically, I'm using these as turnarounds or drum fills. Let's see what this sounds like. So you can see, having this loop as a recycle file is very, very efficient when it comes to being creative, being able to 
Uh, you have the ability to alter the slices to change the pattern very quickly, as opposed to having to cut this file in Cubase and move the events around. Uh, number two, you can actually play this as an instrument, which is not possible if you're using this loop in a digital audio workstation. Uh, it also gives you the ability to select just one or two sounds and play those if you like those sounds within the loop. And third of all, you've got this great randomized feature will allow you to come up with variations of the loop that you probably would never have come up on your own. As you can see, once we've recycled this loop, we have a lot of ways of manipulating the loop that weren't available to us when this was an actual audio file. Your choices are to drop it to track. You can reprogram the slices easily. You can even play this as an instrument, which you could never do as an audio file in the digital workstation, di digital audio workstation. And you can also use this great randomized feature to create patterns that uh, you may not have come up with on your own.